Hey, hello, everyone. The Facebook family, the Facebook tribe. What a what an honor and privilege it is to drop in and to broadcast out into the matrix uh, what what we feel is important, what we feel is is deeply in our hearts to be of service. And how cool is it with all the all the social media buzz and all of the conspiracy that we can do this and have a positive impact and connect with people. So, Dr. Yanka, it's great to see you. How are you doing today? I am fa- I'm fantastic, Kai. And uh, on conspiracy, I just want to remind people that it means breathing together. So, <laughs> you know, if you like to hang out with people and breathe together, then you're, you're conspiracy. in conspiracy. <clears throat> yes, I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, just to start off, uh, I want to just acknowledge that in, in, the, in the greater likelihood, there are two types of people tuning in right now, whether you're catching us live or on the replay. On one hand, there are healers, massage therapists, energy workers who are interested in deepening their understanding of our energetic reality, of their own gifts, of their own ability to have more impact, to, to live longer, to take on less energy from clients and patients. Um, the other person that's likely, and I would include in that the health enthusiasts, the Qigong practitioners, the Tai Chi teachers. The other people that are listening may be people that are aware that it's an uncertain time in history and they're looking for ways to optimize. They're looking for ways to traverse into whatever's next for them with greater ease, greater health, greater integrity. And whichever one of those you are, you're in the right place. Uh, and <laughs> today, we are going to be talking about um, the power of human touch and the way that human touch is medicine. In fact, the way that we, we touch anything is medicine. And so with that, Dr. Yonka, I'm going to let you have some opening remarks here for free, free reign. Yeah. So I think of the two populations that you just described. Um, in the end, we're all in one population as well, which is those who are interested in, called to, inspired by, or, or even feeling pressure to figure out how to um, be more, shall we say, autonomous, more sovereign, more self-capable. And of course, being self-capable is can only really arise from being more self-aware and um, exploring the, uh, shall we say, the uh, boundaries of our knowledge and skill. And in, in the Chinese tradition, skill skill building is called gong or like in gong fu or kung fu or in qigong and so and then there's also that whole concept of developing um <clears throat> shall we say skillful means skillful means is a phrase from buddhism which means a skillful means to to navigate the experience that we're having and the challenges that we see before us uh, but the bottom line skills have to do with s- simple things like hydration, rest, uh, connection with others in a, in a positive way, like we're doing now, even though that's not the kind of connection where we can, you know, hug and, you know, shake hands and carry on. So developing skillful means uh, or gong. I think is where we're headed here today. And when it comes to touch, wow. I mean, Chinese in Chinese medicine, they didn't have, they didn't have acupuncture until 2000 years ago. Acupuncture is a breakthrough, a modern breakthrough, 2000, maybe 3000 years ago. So what did they do before them? Well, they had massage, massage of self and massage of others. Back to you, Kai. Yeah, I love it. And that and what, you know, what you're helping me remember, Dr. J, is that one of the reasons that I have decided to put my hat in the ring in the peak performance space and the biohacking space is because I truly believe that the the wisdom traditions of of China and of India 
they were biohacking for thousands of years and they've already made the mistakes that our modern biohackers are making right now. They, <laughs> and they've written about it and they, they have corrected it over time. And this is where, while Dr. Yonk and I share the same, uh, a similar perspective that oftentimes lineages can be uh, self-limiting and egoic in the way that they don't give away information or they mislead the followers to keep them around or keep them in some type of limited fashion. On the other hand, the lineage itself, if you become a student of it, will help you not make mistakes that are being made right now in the modern biohacking world disconnected. And so this is a really, if you tune into some of these lives, you're going to get a really grounded approach to lifestyle optimization, to peak performance that's based in not only the best modern uh, developments, but, but there's a wisdom of the ancient here. So let's, 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 let's drop into this. So I'm going to start with this, Dr. J. By the way, where this is going to go for everyone that's listening, if you stay till the end, which the end should be probably about 40 minutes from now, um, Dr. J is going to take us through a self-massage. And uh, I shared this before when I was in China studying. <laughs> I resisted the tapping and the warm-ups. I wanted the kung fu. I wanted the breath work. I wanted the movements that looked and felt beautiful. I didn't care at that time in my youth about these minute tapping warm-ups. I have learned since then, not only do they prevent injury, but they are a big part of the squeeze of the health benefits of the of the other pieces. And I think I think most transformatively and probably why Dr. J named it that, he used to call this a chi facelift. It was like I could see when I went to the bathroom after I did this the first time with Dr. J live, like I, my skin was healthier. My scalp was more like everything, there was warmth in the tissue and I was like, wow, this is this is real. This is powerful. But I, I want to drop into this baseline, which is this. There's a quote, and maybe Dr. Yonka can uh, help me lock down who it was, but the quote goes something like this. All of humanity's problems stem from one person's inability to sit alone in a room peacefully. And I share that because no matter how high achieving you are, if you're able to soothe yourself, if you're able to resource yourself, if you're able to calm down your nervous system, you become a better lover, a better partner, a better CEO, and certainly a better healer because you start to realize that you don't need anything from other people. And so that when you engage in relationship, you, you show up fully and whatever you get is a bonus. So mm. that's where I'm going to start from. And a lot of, you know, so Dr. J, why don't you take us into some of the, the science around how human touch affects our neurotransmitters or, you know, you know, any, let's, let's go back to that baseline of how does it work when we touch ourselves, when we get touched by a massage therapist, um, how does it work that the healing mechanism in the body gets turned on? Yeah, well, the first thing to say, when we get massage from somebody else or body therapy, uh, and let's just start by saying that there are so many kinds of body therapy or, or hands-on or, or healing touch or whatever we want to call it, including not touching, uh, you know, which is like chi massage and all that. So uh, first, let's just say the big picture is qigong, and there are four big parts of qigong, body practice, breath practice, mind focusing practice, and massage practice. And one of the ways to make any kind of qigong into a, a medical practice or something targeted at a medical challenge is to do any kind of qigong or tai chi or yoga, but then to do massage to drive the healing resources to the parts that need it the most. So, hey, Dr. J, if I can pause you there, is that a form of what you call conductance in the nine phases? Well, uh, what we call it in the nine phases is transmission. Transmission, okay. And uh, hands-on type massage is a, is a kind of transmission. And then hands near the body uh, are also a kind of transmission. Mm -hmm. uh, and <clears throat> so when we go, uh, let's 
go one time back to the massage itself, there are five kinds. And one of them is pressing, like pressing. So when, you know, pressing yourself or pressing someone else using palms or fingers or knuckles or elbows. And then there's um, tapping. Tapping can be light tapping. Tapping can be slapping. And then there's stroking. So like if we decide that we're going to stroke the channels or stroke the organs or stroke the tissues, all of those are stroking type massages. And then there's holding. Holding is I'm going to like Reiki and polarity and Shen therapy and a bunch of others that are uh, holding type practices where you place your hands on the body, tune in deeply, feel for whatever it is that you feel. And then the fifth kind of massage is Qi massage, which is uh, to not be touching. And then that's transmission and transmission can be close hands, hands on like as in holding cl close, like in chi massage, then, you know, prayer from a distance is a kind of influencing of the chi from far away or across the room or, 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 or whatever. So if we take all of that and think of it as the foundation of Chinese medicine uh, previous to the invention of acupuncture, and ask the question, well, when did the when did people start doing that? Well, I, I saw a story the other day on the internet where they found the, uh, the, the they've decided that the gene, the human gene, is three million years old, and they've actually found bones of a human-like creature that are over one million years old, and that we built fire about five hundred thousand years ago. And what were we not like talking to each other? You know, didn't didn't then the old man come back from like killing a hairy elephant with a wooden stick and say to people around him, like the kids, yeah. Hey kids here, I need it now, you know, press on me, take this, right. take this antler and press as hard as you can on these spots for me. Cause so I can reopen up my channels and, and, and all of that. So I'm rambling. I, can't remember what the question well, was. <laughs> I wanted to. I want. I love it. I love all that. And there's there's so many places we could go from that. We know. I mean, touch is the original form of medicine. You know, dance, touch, vibration, movement. And what I was asking about is the the neurotransmitter cascade. Right. I, I know there's oxytocin involved. I know there's a there's a dilation of the blood vessels when the touch is supportive. And I just wanted you to speak just just sure. briefly to the science of how human touch is a true medicine, not not just a relaxation therapy and even 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 labeling relaxation therapy and and devaluing that is something that you've you've time and time again debunked and helped to illuminate. So I just want that illumination one more time today for everyone. Yeah, that's sure. Here. So it's complex because there are so many mechanisms that are triggered by the by the touch, by all the different, the five kinds of touch that we just talked about. So some, sometimes if we press on a particular place, that has an, that has an influence into the neurological matrix and it, it uh, shall we say, reflexes through the spine and the brain to have an influence on other parts of the body. Another part of what happens is that when we press and stroke, <clears throat> um, that has an influence on the venous blood flow, sending the, the, the used blood, the blood from which the oxygen has been extracted back towards the heart. And at the same time, that, that same type of a gesture has an influence on the lymphatic system where uh, the lymph system is all starting at the periphery and then making its way back towards the core where it is refined by the liver and the kidneys to be discharged as waste products. Um, so then let's go to the, uh, to, to the neurotransmitters. One of the stupid things about this whole idea that <clears throat> body work is just for relaxation is that you, you wouldn't use the word just if you knew what you were talking about, because relaxation has a whole 
array uh, of uh, features that were in, um, uncovered uh, in the in the uh, in the last millennium in the 1900s. Uh, starting early in the 1900s and ending later in the 1900s when they figured out the, uh, the what's called the relaxation response. And then that was Herbert Benson at Harvard. And, and then there was uh, Candace Peart who came up with the, the idea, fa fascinating idea of um, receptor sites. Uh, she and her team were working for the federal government to try to figure out why it is that people take drugs and they found these receptor sites and they realized, well, maybe these receptor sites are where the drugs <clears throat> land and have their effect. But then they had to ask this beautiful question. And that is, did God put these receptor sites into the human system so that people could get high on heroin and marijuana and LSD and psilocybin in, in the 20th century? And the answer is no. The, receptor sites are there because we can make drugs in our own body we call those neurotransmitters our neuroendocrine molecules and it includes oxytocin which is the trust and security so you know when you just lay down on the table for for body work whatever kind of body work that is already there's a door closed and the past is gone the future isn't happening yet and you're in that beautiful present moment where you can just relax. You know that there's not a bomb going off yet. And the meteor that's going to kill us all hasn't arrived <laughs> yet. And so you can just settle down and receive. And so that triggers the relaxation response, which triggers the oxytocin, the endorphins are the ones that uh, uh, soothe or modify pain and serotonin, which is the one that helps us to relax. And of course, then the breath is deeper and slower. And so when you slow down the breath and deepen the breath, the naturally occurring nitric oxide, which is produced in the nasal cavities is being absorbed. And uh, nitric oxide is a um, dilation molecule. And so it dilates the, uh, the, um, alveoli in the in the lungs and then from there it's picked up in the blood and goes into the uh the uh into the vascular system and dilates the supports the process of dilating the arteries and the uh and the and the um what are those little things between the arteries and the veins the capillaries yeah. and the capillaries are are, are are where the oxygen and the nutrition are dropped off so we're dropping off nutrition in the brain. We're dropping off nutrition in the eyeballs. We're dropping off nutrition into, in the heart muscle itself, in the liver, the spleen, the pancreas, the kidneys, the muscles. You know, the yeah. it's such an it's it's such a wide array of uh, mechanisms that the the whole idea that s some anything that you do triggers any one mechanism is archaic um right. almost everything that we do breath practice movement right. having a conversation with people who are interested all of those things are having a a, a wide array of effects on the human system um but kai back to you what's your give me your wrap on this because well, you know when we think about hacking what do we what do you think we're hacking well I think we're tapping back into what is our innate potential. And one of the things in listening to you illuminate all the different mechanisms that happen when a person lays on a table, slows down their breath, receives human touch from someone who's attuned and listening with their hands, all the, all the, the myriad of things that happen there it reminds me of, of kind of this divine dichotomy that I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I've shared this in a bunch of different ways over time. So, from one lens, we live in an extremely complex world. Diseases are complex. Our lives are complex. Our consciousness is pulled in a multitude of of, of directions. There's a lot of toxicity. 
um, all that's happening. And so when someone comes to me with Lyme's disease or chronic, some type of chronic disease, chronic syndrome, by the way, when you hear the word syndrome as a diagnosis, it means we don't really know what's happening. We can't really locate an origin to this. So we're going to label it a syndrome and feel better about ourselves. <laughs> so, so, uh, so on that end, there's this complexity and then there are these people that you and I both know and love that are in and everyone listening. You may be one of them. It may be someone you know. They're looking for a complex solution. They're looking for a magic bullet. They're looking for the exact right diagnosis so that they can feel a sense of relief to know that they're not broken and they can find the correct treatment. So that's one paradigm, complexity. And I'm not invalidating that. But here's the other paradigm, which is that healing is all around us. It's in the next slow breath that we take. It's in choices to simplify our life. It's in the food we eat, the way we sleep. Are we back? Yeah, where did we go? Oh, that was just a, 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 a blip in the matrix. You know, when the, the new program is downloaded, we just, got, we just got rebooted. So we're back. So what I, was, what I was sharing is that I vacillate at times between accepting my role as an expert and providing customized herbal formulas, customized breathwork routines, customized meditations, customized uh, coaching on you know wounds of origin and resolving those original traumas. But then the other side is the, there's equally valid pathway, which is to say, forget about the stuff that's wrong with you and focus on what feels good. P pull, yay, yay. You know, it's, pull the arrow. It's like the story of the Buddha, of the man who was shot with an arrow and he gets to the doctor and he says, before I can pull this arrow out, I would like to know where did it come from? What kind of arrow is it? What are these feathers made from that are on the back of the arrow? What stone is the tip of the arrow made from? Take the freaking arrow out. <laughs> Seal up the wound. You can figure that all out later or not when you're alive and vibrant and flowing. And in, in the tradition that Dr. Yanka and I share, that latter tradition is either referred to in the preventative, uh, in the preventative way as yang sheng, nourishing life, or in the treatment way as fu zheng, supporting the righteous, supporting the upright. And my my trajectory in my life is moving much more toward fu zheng and yang sheng because it doesn't matter when you stop practicing. It doesn't matter what got you into the situation if you can get the learning from it and start doing what feels good today, right now, then you're on the right path. And that's when diseases that normally have small percentage of survival, that's when you're able to put yourself in the outlier percentage is when you start focusing on what feels good, what you can do, what, what do you want to do today, take your shoes off, go outside, take deep breaths, disconnect from complexity. So with that, Dr. J, let's move into... Uh, whatever prep we need for this uh, self massage, and then let's get let's get into that. Yeah. So just before we go on, I want to say one phrase about Fu Zheng, uh, which is I, I I think I kind of made this up on my own, but I might have read it somewhere. But it goes like this: uh, There is an aspect of myself, and and I'm by the way I'm I'm suggesting that everybody sort of take this in as if you were saying it, and maybe even think about saying it to yourself. There is an aspect of myself which is irrevocably well, cannot get sick, and does not die. And that phrase is so incredible. Uh, so when we talk about Fu Zheng, we're, we're talking about when, when Kai and I as doctors of Chinese medicine, what we're saying is 
instead of focusing on what's wrong with you, we're going to actually find out who you are and support you in maximizing that which is right, called supporting the righteous, which I think is just such a beautiful phrase. All right. So going on to um, massage, I need to ask you, Kai, what are we working on? What's the what, where are we focusing? Are we doing that? <laughs> are we doing that facelift? I want the chi and scalp facelift, but really, I think we could do a couple things for the body, but I think we should definitely finish up here because it's such a profound difference. In fact, if you're watching, go look in yourself, look at yourself in the mirror or take even better. I challenge you, take a moment and take a picture of your face right now. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my phone? I'm going to screenshot us, Dr. J. Just look in the camera. I got us. Screenshot us. Look in the camera. Try to look as old as possible. It's not easy for you. <laughs> All right. I got, the, I got the screenshot. Now, um, I just want you to see how profound this self-massage can be. And when we get into the massage, I'm going to use the bathroom, but I'm going to put Dr. J on the big screen so that you don't need to watch me over here following his directions. You can just enjoy him full screen. But take a screenshot now. Tune into your body for a moment. Notice how you're feeling. Where are you holding your tension? How present do you feel? If you're multitasking right now, this is an opportunity to close those tabs and get ready from a seated or a standing position to... Turn on some of the medicine within. All right. It's right, up to tight. you. I I'm, I'm prefer. I have a preference to end up here. All the good stuff. So, all right. Let me, let me get myself out of the stream and let you take it away. Uh, <laughs> Donna said she took a mug shot. Yep. <laughs> and uh, another, another person who I can't see their names asked if touch is not always physical. And, yes, in the beginning, Dr. Yanka talked about uh, the different types of touch, including the movement of our hands – in the electromagnetic field of the of our own body or another's body, as well as the the very uh, real effect, spooky action at a distance, as Einstein called it, where our prayer and our intention is now absolutely proven to impact other people. Uh, we're not going to go down this rabbit hole, but there was even a study. I think Dr. Yanka is familiar with it. I probably heard about it from him, where they did prayer experiment, and the prayer traveled back in time because the experiment was longitudinal and they did prayer at a later date uh, for people who were sick from 10 years earlier and the, the 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 outcomes of their sickness from 10 years earlier were transformed by the prayer 10 years later i i will dig up the research because it's mind-blowing the people praying didn't know the people they were praying for were sick 10 years ago they had no knowledge of this they just had a name a disease, a location. But, and, and of course, the, the study uh, intentionally didn't look at the prognosis or outcome of the group that they were studying because that would take it from a wave to a particle. They looked at a group of sick people who they did not look at the outcome. They prayed for them several years after whatever happened had happened, and then they went back and looked, and those that prayed for received benefit statistically. <laughs> from those that weren't prayed for. We live in an amazing universe. All right, let's get Dr. J into some some massage. Let me get myself out of here. We're going to give sure you a hall. You, you have a hall pass to uh, go to the bathroom. <laughs> All right. So uh, our goal here is we're going to use the concept of a simple approach to what we call medical Qigong, which basically has us doing a Qigong practice followed by a couple of massage steps. And we're going to uh, <clears throat> abbreviate all of these. So you could think to yourself, the Qigong per portion would probably have been 20 minutes or longer. And the self-massage portion that comes right after the Qigong uh, would also be longer. So this is all going to be truncated. So you think to yourself, if I was going to ever do this again, which I highly suggest, then uh, you would expand on, on everything that we're going to do here. So we're going to start with a breath practice, and it's two breaths in and one breath out, and I'm just going to move the body too. And let me back up just a tiny bit, <clears throat> and then we'll come closer when we're doing 
some of the um, upper uh, upper portion massage. Uh, two breaths means a belly breath and then a chest breath. So belly breath, chest breath, turn palms down, exhale slowly. We're going to do this just a few times slow. Belly breath, chest breath, exhale slowly. <clears throat> I like to remind us that these are long, slow, deep breaths. And the abbreviation for long, slow, deep is LSD. So we're doing LSD breathing. How much fun is that? Now we're going to go faster and it it shifts the inner uh, trigger. It triggers different mechanisms when we go slow and we go fast. We'll have a conversation about how and why some other time. We're just going to go faster now. Belly breath, chest breath. Exhale slowly. Now faster. Faster. Belly, chest, belly, chest. We could go faster, but we're just going to go on to the next thing, which is cloud hands, both hands on one side. The top hand passes, the bottom hand passes. Breathe in here. Breathe in here. Now exhale. One more on each side, remembering that if you were going to do this ever again, you would do it for longer and probably slower. Breath in breath out. Cross your hands in front. Big breath in. Exhale slowly. Put your hands in your lap. So we're going to call that the Qigong portion. And there would be typically that would last at least 20 minutes. Typically a whole Qigong session is going to be 30 minutes, 40 minutes. So now we're going to go on to uh, a some quick massage of the shoulders. My, my right hand, whichever hand you wish, across the front of my body, pressing on my left shoulder. Press, 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 and lift your shoulder, press, drop your shoulder, press, move your head around, press, put your arm out in front of you, press, Put your arm behind you, press. It's always better, faster, more efficient if you move the part that you're rubbing. So if I'm using my right hand to rub my left shoulder, then I'm going to be moving my left shoulder around. Now, my left hand to my right shoulder, same. Lift my shoulder, drop my shoulder, press, press, press. Move my head around maybe even move my torso. Everything that you do when you're doing the self massage, in addition to pressing on the points, is just accelerating the practice. Would you, if you were lying on a massage table, wiggle around like that? No, because the body work person is going to do the work for you. When you're massaging yourself, you want to be as efficient as possible. Uh, and of course, that massaging of the, of the shoulders would go on for a longer time. And there are other things that we can do to our neck, like you can just press in on your neck and move your head around. You can also massage your ears, hands and feet. Let's just rub our ears for a moment. Now, typically, ear massage would last for five or seven minutes, 
in in this case we're going to do ear massage for uh 30 seconds your whole ear and then use the tip of your finger to press on the inside of your ear not so much down in the sound hole but against your head press 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 massaging your hands imagine you're sitting at a stoplight and you do a little hand massage while you're sitting at the stoplight uh, you're in a meeting and uh, there's you're sitting at a table <clears throat> and somebody else is speaking you've got your hands down in your lap but you're pressing on points on the front of your on the palm of your hand and you're using the fingers uh, behind your hand but between the bones pressing 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 you can squeeze your hands when i was doing clinical practice one of the things would people would always say to me is would you squeeze my hands again same with the feet for some reason people love to have their feet and their hands squoze <laughs> okay so <clears throat> Now we're going to call that the um, the uh, qigong plus a little bit of a massage here and there type practice. Now we're going to go towards the face massage, and uh, we call it a qigong facelift because it it's kind of uplifting, and um, there's many 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 versions of how to do this, and so we're going to just start. By doing this put your hands on your heart do a little tapping deepen your breath deep and slow and la relax the breath or long slow deep breaths or lsd breaths and then stop and with the tips of your fingers tips of your fingers trace up onto your face and put the whole palm on your face and then stroke over the top of your head down your shoulders bring your tips of your fingers to your heart again do it again we'll do it two more times and the idea here is to just to get the chi now remember the chi is like the, the chinese code word for function so we're increasing the functional activity of all the parts of the body by doing the breath practices and the movements and the massages that we've done already. Now we're going to go to tapping, tapping at the heart. Now, why do we start at the heart? Because the heart is, even in the Western world, we think of our heart as being associated with our feelings. And so we want to use the breath long slow deep lsd breath when you exhale exhale very slowly and say something talk to yourself say something to, to yourself like you know what i think i'm safe right now so instead of worrying about all the things i always worry about instead of trying to solve the problems of the world which cannot be solved by me what i'm going to do is i'm going to solve the problem of my own habituated worry tapping onto your now lift your chin and tap on your neck and we're going to come back to these parts and do stroking in a few moments but for right now we're tapping on your neck and then onto your face and I'm using all of my fingers, all of my fingers, tapping, tapping, tapping. So I'm getting not just one spot with each tap, but four on each side. And of course, my I'm erecting my posture and I'm deepening my breath and I'm focusing on what's happening now. So if I find myself starting to think, well, why am I doing this? Shouldn't I be you know, checking on the price of gold or um, worrying about whether I have enough supplies to, su to survive a uh, whatever it might be that it is a cause for the need of surviving. Right now, I'm in, I'm in that place between the past and the future where I can just calm down 
and focus on myself for a moment. This is the part where you say, how can I take care of anybody else if I don't care, take care of myself? So I'm tapping everywhere on my face, my chin, my cheeks, back by my ears, below my eyes, to the side of my eyes, my forehead, onto my scalp, tapping. And notice is that you do these snappy taps to your head. It, it, for many of you, you, right now, you're already feeling some kind of like twinkly thing that's going on that actually discharges throughout the body. Uh, in China, the first thing that they do if anybody has a stroke is they start tapping on their head until the acupuncturist can get there to insert needles into the skull, which has been found by lots of research to um, minimize the effects of a stroke. Back to your face, everywhere on your face. Okay, so now we're going to do stroking. And stroking goes like this. Uh, these two fingers, one goes in, one goes in front, sorry, this finger <laughs> goes in front of my ear, and this finger goes behind my ear, and I'm going to do it on both sides, and my thumbs, my thumbs are stroking my neck. And if you really want to go all the way, what you do is you do eye exercises at the same time. So right now I'm going to look up, now I'm looking down, now I'm looking to the left, now I'm looking to the right, now I'm looking to the upper right corner, now I'm looking to the upper left corner, now I'm looking to the lower left corner, now I'm looking to the lower right corner, st stroking on the side with these two fingers going in front of, in, in back of my ears. Now I'm going to do stroking I'm going to lift my chin. I'm going to use my right hand to do the front portion of my left neck. And I can do the, the, um, I can do the uh, eye exercises again. Upper, lower, left, right, upper right-hand corner, upper left-hand corner, lower left-hand corner, lower right-hand corner, other side, upper, look up, look down. Look left, look right, upper left-hand corner, upper right-hand corner, lower right-hand corner, lower left-hand corner. Now I'm going to do a little massage on my ears again. This time I'm going to focus particularly on my ear lobe. The ear lobe is associated with your face, your brain, your eyes, your nose, your tongue for tasting. And so vigorous... Uh, Vigorous rubbing of the lobe of my ears or heart pressing, pressing like pinch, 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 pressing because I'm pressing on the reflexes according to Chinese medicine for my face, my head, my brain and the organs, the sensory organs in my head. Now I'm going to use these two fingers, put them under my ears, under my ears, press in, open my jaw. When you press in here and open your jaw, you can feel it opens a, a hole, a space. Now press into that space, just relax your jaw, and pull down. Do it again. Reach up into that hole, pull down. Reach up into that hole, pull down. Now to conclude, you can, while I'm saying what I'm saying, you can just do some more tapping of your face. What we're going to do next is rub hands fast, now, while you're tapping, watch what I'm doing. I'm rubbing my hands fast to build up a charge. 
And then I'm going to put my hands on my face and I'm going to have the lower part of my hand lift my chin or jaw or whatever you want to call that. I'm going to have the uh, knuckles of the inside of my, of my palm lift my cheeks and I'm going to have the tips of my fingers, tips of my fingers lift my forehead. Now, if you stop tapping uh, while I was describing that, it, it, it just allows the effect to kind of drift away. So keep keep tapping. Okay, so now we're going to go on. This is the conclusion, the um, the grand conclusion of the uh, chi facelift for today. And your lower portion on your jaw, your knuckles lifting your cheek and the tips of your fingers lifting your head, your forehead. And then if you can look between your hands, you can see that what I'm doing now is that I'm wiggling my hands really fast. So I'm lift my head, lengthen my spine, deepen my breath. And I'm wiggling my hands as fast as I can go. And I'm going to do that for three LSD breaths. See if you can scan the body for tension and relax your shoulders and any other tension in the body. Two more deep breaths. And one more deep breath. Wiggle, wiggle your hands. Okay, now stop, but keep your hands on your face for just a moment. Now lift your hands from your face really slow. And notice, turn your attention inward, inward. Notice what you're feeling. Notice what you're feeling in your face, in your hands. Now with your hands at a distance from your face of about one to two inches, just go up by your eyes, relax, drop your shoulders, lift your head, deepen your breath, move your hands around, just circulate your hands just a little bit. See if you can feel some chi from your hands on your face or the chi of your face on your, on your hands. Bring your hands back by your ears. Uh, Bring your hands away from your ears, then very slowly bring your hands close to your ears. So this is the chi massage part where you're not actually touching the physical body. You're touching the magnetic field or the chi field or the aura, whatever you want to call that. Now bring your hands together like prayer hands drop your hands to your heart one last lsd breath notice what you're feeling and then when you're ready drop your hands into your lap and we'll see if we can get kai to Join us. Uh, I got to take our post massage screenshot. It looks like we've been, looks like all of us have made love to ourselves here. It's beautiful. All right. Gosh, that was so powerful, Dr. J. Thank you so much. Uh, let us know in the comments, whether you're watching live or on the replay, what, what do you notice is different about the way you feel? And when you remind yourself of the medicine that we can create within all the science, all the rationality, you may notice that it becomes easier to take better care of yourself because when we know the why less willpower is required. Mm. 
Thank you, Dr. J, for giving us such a beautiful why. You are so welcome, Kai. I love this uh, opportunity and, and thank you everyone out there. And I hope you can take this in as like, wow, you mean I can do this to myself in somewhere around 12 minutes? Or what would happen if I expanded it to, you know, 15, 20, 30 minutes and constantly turning your attention inward to notice how you're feeling and scan and release tension. There's like no there's no kind of doctor in the world who can do that for you. Yeah. And yet it. you can do it for yourself and you don't even have to drive to the doctor's office. Beautiful. Now, if you do want to drive somewhere or fly, <laughs> <laughs> this, this conversation, which is probably going to keep going, hopefully into our longevity and infinity. But part of the inspiration is that Dr. Yonk and I are going to be, uh, together in Olympia, Washington, at an event called the I Am Massage Symposium. That is a event that combines the best uh, CEU uh, credits for massage therapists with incredible teachers who are not just good at what they do clinically, but they're tapped into their own heart and their own self-healing and to what's going on on the planet. Uh, there's going to be skill set upgrades for our business and our abundance for the healers so that they can thrive on the next level. And there's going to be self-cultivation for us, the same kind of stuff that Dr. Yonk and I are doing for everybody. And then in addition to the CEU track, we have another track called the Pathway of Power track, which is how to access our best self on demand. Qigong, breath work, fascial repatterning, where we learn how to move and stretch and open our bodies. It's really an extension of massage. And that, that track will be available to those that just want to come and rejuvenate and refocus, and refocus and nourish themselves. And so there's a link in the comments, probably wherever you are. It's, it's www.atamassages with an S dot com forward slash passes. And we'll get a better link for that over time. That's shorter and easy to remember, but you'll find it in there. And, uh, I believe, yeah, Dr. Yonk and I will be back next week and we'll be exploring another way that we can access the medicine within. Thank you so much, Dr. J, for your time. Really appreciate you. Wish you well, Kai. Wish you well, everyone. See you in Washington. And let's, if we linger one minute, let's just see if there's any questions that we can ask, we can answer. Uh, all right. Well, Thank while we're looking, let's, let's notice that there's a little space right there where we can take a little LSD, <laughs> breathing that is. I think that there's no, I don't think people are really asking many questions, which is fine, but just know that the more you interact, the more you show up and ask questions, the more we can customize the transmission to potentially uh, share an insight or a perspective that may help you where it's wherever you're at so all right thank you all and we'll see you next week